Hello and welcome to our channel. This is part one of the build. You will notice it's a strange start as usually you see others starting their build with a blank canvas. Not me, as I have already started ours, but I've done a short intro video on what I have achieved so far. So let's start from the beginning. This is our 2017 long wheelbase Ford Transit Custom. I bought this as it was well within my budget and had low miles and it has the added bonus of having cruise control and air conditioning. The other reason, it is my daily driver, so I need it to be reasonable in size. I would have loved a larger van like a Sprinter or a Crafter, but one, I would struggle getting it down the side of my house, and two, parking a long van when you nip into a shop isn't practical, but it is my future goal. And as you can see from the inside, it is a bit battered. I am the sixth owner from new, so it has been well used. But that ain't gonna stop me convert it into our camper. So I started off, as you do, with removing the bulkhead and all the factory fitted ply liner. So next was the windows. Now, if you do not feel comfortable doing this, get a professional. At first, this is what I was going to do, but after lots and lots of video watching, I decided to do it myself. Cutting a hole in the side of your van is not an easy thing to do. This is why I started on the sliding door first, because if I made a mistake, it will be a heavy mistake, but I could replace the door. So I cracked on, took my time, and in the end, I'm super happy with the results. Super happy because they don't leak. And one other major factor was the weather. It was boiling that day, which meant using the adhesive was a lot easier. When it's colder, it would be very difficult to use. It is recommended that you can warm up your cartridge when you apply around the window. But like I said, there are many, many videos out there I watched a company called Kira Vans, which is where I bought my windows from. Um, got them at a great price. They come well packaged and super happy with the quality of the glass. Um, as I know, as many people have had issues with the glass being warped or being damaged on arrival. Um, and they, I know they are quick to respond if you do have damaged glass. So here it is, all attached. And there's the temperature I had to play with that day. So I did one window one day and let it sat, never moved the van. And then cracked on with the next window the next day. I was a bit more confident. So here's inside the van. Good clean. I mean, so there was all dirt, debris was out the van. Ready to install the Dodo Super Liner, which is 12 mil thick. I chose this as I felt it was the best application for my van. Now I did this from side to side in the van as a lot easier to put down. Remember it was thick. And then I used the foil tape just to cover up the joins, just to stop moisture getting through to the floor. Next, I bought a CNC pre-cut 12 mil plywood floor from a company on eBay called Custom Shop Designs UK. If you're installing a rock and roll bed, 12 mil is recommended, but the lowest you can absolutely go is nine millimeters. I lay it, when I got it, I lay it down to test fit, which is a must, as I had to alter a piece just beside the wheel arch. But when I was happy with it, I pulled it back up. I then drew it around the vinyl um, so I can cut it out so I knew it would be perfectly shaped around the floor. Next was to secure the ply to the van. As you can see, I attached red tape to the van where I knew where the ribs were on the floor of the van. So once I put the flooring down, I drew a grid line, lining up all the red tape as you can see, so I knew exactly where I could drill. Once I drew the grid, I then used a two millimeter drill bit so when applying the self-tappers, it wouldn't be so difficult. Once I pre-drilled, I then used a counter sink drill bit and it was just allow the head of the screw to sit flush to the flooring. But before I glued the vinyl down, I let it rest. 
because obviously it's been rolled up for quite a while. So the next day I used a spray adhesive. Um, I did this from the bulkhead to the center of the van. Did it in about 30 mil intervals um, just so I can make sure it was square. Take your time. You only really get one shot. Um, you can have, you've got a few seconds to pull it back up if you need to alter it. But once it's down, it's down. Otherwise, you'll just tear your vinyl apart. So once I got the flooring done, I bought a rock and roll bed from a company called Fabworks in Chesterfield. I cannot recommend these guys enough. They showed me to the showroom where you could view their beds, but also view down to their workshop as they made all their beds in the shop. Nothing's imported. It's all their own. They um, give a great warranty. They test beyond any other rock and roll bed. Well worth every penny. Penny. I will leave a link in the description below to this company. And here I nab some Fabworks cushions. And there it is with my Hamish the Cow cushion. We decided to clad the inside of this van. And it is not easy. The roof is straightforward. It's pretty straight. Um, but coming around the side and trying to fix it to the side wall was a daunting task. Um, I can do a video if if it's requested. I can explain more on what I've done, how I attached it, and so forth. What I used, um, I used seven packs of plywood, which were three meters long, so I knew I wouldn't have joins in the center. Then the bulkhead, I created a, a wooden framed bulkhead with a carpet on the inside. Again, I can do another video explaining this more detail. And then on the inside, I cladded it with a small door so I can access it from the inside the van to where I'm eventually going to be putting a leisure battery. It's a perfect place to put it. The main starting battery is underneath the driver's seat so the cables won't be long at all. And I can keep everything under there and there'll be no wires traipsing all around the van. I use some cheap uh, T hinges with some uh, magnets. The magnets are not strong enough when the van is, in mo uh, is moving the door just pops open, so I need to get stronger magnets. Then I attach this light, um, which has a USB port underneath, which is great for just something to charge nearby. Um, so here's a video of it from the inside. Um, this is before I changed the cladding down the right-hand side, which you'll see in a second. Um, I didn't know what really to do with this, so I carpeted it. Um, maybe for in the future I can um, add pictures, it can be a bit like a pin board um, for all the places that we go. Um, that didn't take too long at all. So this is me redesigning the cladding on the right. So remove the pieces and as you can see I've gone straight up to the wall of the van. And that is basically where I'm up to. So here's a picture of our mascot Hamish, which uh, my wife bought me for my birthday. Um, yeah, so that's where we're up to. Uh, my next is electrics, um, just very basic electrics. We are actually looking to go to Scotland in a couple of weeks. Uh, the van is nowhere near finished, but we're just going to do it. We're going to have a bit of fun, um, see how we get on with having a van with nothing in it. Essentially just camping in a metal tent. So the next video will be doing basic electrics. Um, I'm going to try and get a leisure battery so I can wire everything. I do have a split charge system uh, ready for my van, um, so we can crack on with that. As long as I've got all the basics ready for Scotland, um, then that shouldn't be a problem. So if you'd like to stick around and see how we get on with our conversion, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. See you soon.